Theoretical Physics, Dr. Fizz, Chapter I, Quantum Mechanics. Before we look at quantum mechanics, we're going to see a trend around 1900 and beyond where physicists are forced by experimental data to quantize things that classically are continuous. And the first is Max Planck with the quantization of oscillator energy. Think of your harmonic oscillator, a ball on the end of a spring, wiggling back and forth. Well, you could have any frequency. Well, not according to Max Planck. To understand light being emitted from glowing masses, the so-called black body radiation problem, where they consider uh, enclosed cubicle region or, or any kind of uh, region where light can go in and then have equilibrium energy with the walls of the container and then the walls glow. Now the stars are considered black bodies in this model. You shine any light into the sun, it absorbs it. However, the sun also gives off all forms of radiation according to the black body distribution uh, curve. So Max Planck basically quantize the energy of the oscillator with some multiples of a constant times the frequency and he was able to then explain the results that were seen experimentally when you look at the various intensities the amounts of radiation as a function of frequency coming from these glowing masses so something like a coal that's glowing in a fireplace would be approximately a black body radiation. Just think of glowing masses. Planck got this pretty close. Uh, in quantum mechanics, when we derive this uh, energy levels for the harmonic oscillator, we get the reference, the zero uh, point energy as one half HF. And here Planck took it to be zero, but he has all the uh, spacings correct the spacings of the harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics are indeed given by HF. Notice that the uh, Planck constant here has units of energy times time because the frequency is 1 over time and energy has to be then just joules so if you have say this is 1 over seconds, you have to have joules times seconds, so the 1 over seconds will cancel and you'll get joules. So energy, say, is joules in the uh, metric system, and then F is 1 over second, therefore H has to be joule times second. So this is called the action. Energy times time is what the H uh, units uh, correspond to. Next is Albert Einstein who takes uh, Planck quite seriously in stating that when an oscillator should go from one level to the next the light itself is actually a particle with energy HF, a packet of energy and Einstein called these light, quant light quanta and here we use the word photon due to a chemist who around let's say 1926 used the term photon and that became very very popular. Here's what Einstein was trying to understand. When certain frequencies of light mostly at like ultraviolet hit some metals electrons pop off. However the electrons do not pop off unless the frequency is high enough for some threshold. So here's a nice little graph that explains this. This is called the photoelectric effect. Photons shining on metal pop off electrons. Photoelectric effect. And here there's some work energy given by this phi where you have to come out of this uh, hole here to, to get the electrons released. In other words they're bound and, well actually in the metal they're not really bound. Electrons are free to move in metals. So but but still that to get them out of the surf to get them out of the solid takes some takes some energy so the photon hits the electron and if it has enough energy it will pop it off and if it releases it'll have zero kinetic energy it'll just be sitting there however if the photon has more energy to kick it out and then give it some one half mv squared energy kinetic energy then you get here this nice formula which says that the energy of the photon 
minus the energy you need it to kick it out of the metal is equal to one half mv squared. Notice that these models are all what we call semi-classical. They, they have classical ideas like one half mv squared. Uh, however, they're using something new, uh, this quantization. So Einstein explains this beautifully with this graph where the slope is the Planck constant and the y-intercept is here minus the work function or the energy of work you, you, know, you need to do to kick that thing out. That's often called just the work um, energy. And we move on to the third case, Niels Bohr, who quantizes angular momentum. So you might think of Planck quantizing harmonic oscillator energy or quantizing energy. Einstein quantizes the photon, uh, well, electromagnetic radiation, he quantizes light. And here, Bohr quantizes angular momentum. So the idea of the Bohr atom is that how do you explain all these beautiful lines, spectral lines coming from hydrogen? They're not continuous like a glowing mass, which is what Planck was trying to understand, continuous frequency you know, distribution. Here you have discrete and Bohr's model uses the idea that there's different energy levels here where if you subtract uh, the levels, you've, uh, the electron falls from a higher level to a lower one, it gives off a light, a light quantum given by HF. So in Bohr's model he looks at the uh, momentum of a particle going in a circle MV and then he quantizes it. Well first he finds the angular momentum which is the definition in classical physics is to take the distance from your reference point here the center times the tangential momentum so that's MV so MV times R is angular momentum and then he goes on to quantize that and is able to understand the spectrum of hydrogen so here's his quantization procedure he quantizes angular momentum in units of h over 2 pi, which we like to call h bar. So h must also be the units of angular momentum. Well, we said h was energy times time. If we look here, angular momentum is momentum times distance. Well, momentum, if you should change the momentum with respect to time, if you should divide by time, then you would have here force and force times distance is energy, your work. So if you divide by time, you better multiply by time. So therefore you would have energy times time. So this is also energy times time. And this makes the hydrogen spectrum work for us. And I might point out that really physicists are in trouble because if they use classical physics, this electron, which is in orbit around a proton, that's the hydrogen atom, this is accelerate wiggling. This is wiggling, like shaking back and forth, like an electron and an antenna. And if you have this acceleration here like this, you're going to shake off electromagnetic waves. You have changing electromagnetic fields, which means you should give up energy and it should spiral into the center, which means you would have no such thing as a stable atom and you would be unstable. You would not exist.